Hey, it's Andrew Priestley. Welcome. Um, I'm talking about the money chimp. I'm talking about multiply your money. And I've been reading from my book called The Money Chimp and just chatting about it. So uh, the promise of the money chimp is that you'll spend less, save more, and get out of debt a lot faster. Now, uh, I had some interesting uh, uh, comments and some uh, one or two emails saying, uh, this is about millennials. Yeah, it's about 18 to 25s. But uh, there's Jason. Hey, Jason. How are you, mate? Um, but people said to me, um, uh, can you be older than 25 years old to get benefit from this? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, The Money Chimp was written for 18 to 25-year-olds, but actually it was actually written for the parents of 18 to 25 who were, who were worried about their adult children and just how rubbish they were with money. And it also came out of the fact that uh, when I talk to a lot of people, they just don't know how to manage their money really, really well. There's Sharon. There's the wonderful Sharon Paul. Hi, Sharon. Um, uh, so I wrote a book called The Money Chimp, and The Money Chimp came out in 2016. And uh, what's come out of that is a podcast, which you can find on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, called Multiply Your Money. And then I've got this as well. So the money chimp. So um, if you go back a couple of episodes, you can listen to the intro and do the quiz and all that sort of stuff. And you can also join the group, and I'll put the link down below. And the group is uh, is a crass ad for the group. The group is great because uh, what you can do is um, you can get a whole lot of treats and goodies for free inside the group that won't be available out here. Okay, so. So navigate through to the group and, and watch out because there's a whole lot of really cool stuff in there as well. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about the truth about uh, most 18 to 25-year-olds around money. Okay, And back in um, – hey, Maria – Back in 2012, I went to uh, I went to the London Town Hall, and there was a there was a a, a, a meeting that was put on by um, uh, by NatWest and a number of the banks, and they were talking about that. Basically, it was young people who were, people who were saying, you know, why can't we get a bank loan? And um, and there's plenty of money out there to get a bank loan. Right at the moment, but it's the story was that we just didn't want to lend to you because we can't see your business plan, etc. But a side of that was the uh, the chief economist from the Royal Bank of uh, Scotland, who's saying, uh, based on their stats, that most eighteen to twenty five year olds were spending one hundred and thirty percent of their disposable weekly income. So if they had hundred pounds um, disposable income, they were spending one hundred and thirty pounds of it. And how are they doing it? Clearly, they're doing that on credit card, right? So they're spending that money on credit card. I want you to, I want you to get this. I want you to get this because this is not just young people. I get paid a hundred pounds, and I'm spending one hundred and thirty. Where's that going? Where are we going with that? Got one hundred and thirty. Hey, Ingrid. So we've got. I'm get, I've got a hundred pounds. So I'm spending one hundred and thirty, and I'm doing that on a routine basis. This is why the banks were worried about young people and credit cards. Okay, now uh, clearly you're going to spend money on. Uh, and I'm, for those people who just joined, I'm taking notes from my book called The Money Chimp, which has been in, the, in and out of the top twenty money books in the UK since two thousand sixteen. Okay, so you're going to spend money on things like um, food, food shopping, rent, utilities, transport, right? Right, and then you've got your discretionary income. Now, this is money that's available to, that you can invest it, you can save it um, after you've paid your bills and necessities. But what do you spend your money on? What do you spend the money on? Okay, and most people don't know. So typically, what I found, and and you know what the various reports tell me, and people like my bank tell me, is that you spend money on stuff that um, on stuff you can't afford and stuff you don't need. Basically, right, and you know that's the power of marketing to get you to want something that that you don't want or can't can't use, right? And credit cards have, have created this culture whereby it's I have what I want now and pay for it later. And how does that work out for most people? Well, we know that young people eight into twenty five. Um, I said I said on an earlier recording that um, uh, they owe eight point three. I think it's about they owe about nine point seven billion on credit card debt right now. Okay. Which is a phenomenal amount, nine point seven billion young people owe on credit cards, and 
young people, and I'm talking about young people, typically are about one or two, uh, one or two paydays away from being broke. And that's the reality of it. So if you talk to people like uh, Money Dashboard and My Bank, that's what they're telling us. Okay, that most young people are about one or two paydays from broke. In fact, that's true of a lot of people I talk to. Okay, even people on really good incomes. And what they've got is they've got this fantasy that they're going to get a pay rise or they're going to get a better job or they're going to win the lottery or they're going to get an inheritance or there's going to be some benevolent person who's going to bail them out. Um, you've got to think about this stuff. You know, you've got to think about if you're living your life along the plan that my plan for getting wealthy, my plan for survival, my plan for looking after myself is someone else pays. Some benevolent person gives me money, like parents, for example, you know, and they say, "Can I borrow money off you?" And they actually mean, "Can you give it to me?" Because there's no intention to repay it. In fact, um, you know, I did a couple of workshops with young people who said, oh, "I borrow money from my parents." I said, "Do you ever repay it?" And I, honest to God, there was probably about one out of thirty that that has the intention of repaying that money, even though they use the word borrow. It's actually they see it as a gift. In other words, if you love me, you'll give me the money, right? Um, the truth is that young people rely on being bailed out by someone who's more responsible around money or who has managed to put money aside. Um, then they say, I'm going to treat you as an ATM. I'm going to come and, you know, you know, if I need money, I'll friends, relatives, I'll borrow the money. And then they go also compounding things by then misusing their credit card. Okay, and they don't care about it. They don't worry about it, right? You know, I was chatting with a, a young couple that had spent seventeen thousand pounds on Christmas presents. They don't have that money, but they spent seventeen thousand pounds on Christmas last year. Crazy. Okay. Um, sadly, what I'm finding is most young people are never taught how to do the most basic, basic life skill ever, which is managing money. They're not taught that. What they're taught is if I want something, if I whine and I'm persistent, then someone will buy it for me. That's what they're being trained. They're not trained. Like when I grew up, when I was a kid, if you wanted something, you had to save up for it. You had to work for it and save up for it. That's that's how life worked, right? Uh, there was no credit card, and my parents certainly weren't going to be just handing money over to me, okay? And um, the problem with credit cards is that you've also now got on top of that interest fees and charges. I'm I'm taking this from the money chimp and I'm taking it from the chapter called The Truth About Most 18 to 25 year olds. I did the cartoons by the way, right? It's in there. Um and what I'm talking about also describes older people as well. They're irresponsible around money. Okay. Um and I'm saying here, a recent survey said 89% of wage earners of any age, 87% of any age, right, can't maintain their lifestyle beyond six weeks currently on the cash that they've got, right? Um, I've always operated on the basis of having cash buffer. So, I've, you know, at any one point in time, I've got three to six months worth of overheads in cash in case I have quiet months. I've got cash reserves. I've got money set aside for emergencies. Most people don't have anything like that. Okay. Um, if that sounds like you, then go into the group. You can actually uh, you can actually go to www.moneychimp.net and you can take a test that costs you twenty five pounds. If you actually go into the group, multiply your money, join the Facebook group, multiply your money. You can do the quiz for free. There's a link for you can do the quiz for free in there, right? But you've got to join the group. That's my crass bribe to get you to join my group, right? And tell people about this. They can tell it, and you get a really comprehensive report back. It takes about seven minutes, and you get this really comprehensive report about how you are around money, what's going on with money. Okay. Um, the good news about this, though, is that you can change. See, back in session one, I'm talking about you know money's just a game. It's like a barrel of monkeys. It's like playing Monopoly. It's like chess. It's like any one of these games. If it's got rules, if you follow the rules, you play the game. If you ignore the rules. Then, uh, or try to do it your way, or try to do it a different way, other than the way the rules work, you end up in trouble. Okay, so there are rules around credit cards, and people use credit cards as if there were no rules. So the penalty for abusing the rules is interest fees and payments and charges. Okay, and by the way, they're not hidden. Don't ever, don't ever tell me that they're hidden charges. They're right there on the statement. All you got to do is read your statement, and you'll see them. Okay. 
But the good news is you can change. The principles in my book are timeless. They really are, okay? If you apply them, if you use them. So the question is, why am I watching this? What do I want out of money? How do I want my money life to be? How do I want it to be? What do you want? Focus on that question. How do you want to feel around money? So uh, on the next session, um, I'm going to give you an interesting little exercise that involves a little bit of doing a desk search, okay? On the next one. Now, if you want more of what this, what I'm talking about, and you'd like to do a, uh, there's a little course I put up as a podcast called Multiply Your Money. It's on uh, Spotify. It's 120 sessions. You can go there right now. You, you can, uh, wherever, whatever it takes you to, if it takes you to less than 87, scroll down and go to lesson one and just start there. And you've, and you've got 120 lessons, which just give you tips and ideas, not tips, but strategies and steps for managing money a whole lot better. I hope that helps. And I'll see you in the next session, session five. Talk to you then.